Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy, so keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. My wife, she's missing. I fear terribly for her safety. Some women are just looking for a reason to go missing. She disappeared into the Akedar Desert, the heart of the Whispering Waste. As suicides go, it has an exotic appeal. I fear she has returned to my former mansion. If you would track her, find her, bring her home, you'd pay me in sad looks and liquor. The mansion was never reclaimed by the tax collectors. Dark rumors swirl amid the whispering winds. 
none of my efforts will ruin me the dooms and cataclysms past. If my vault is untouched, its entire contents, the wealth of five noble generations, are yours. You had your openers and closers reversed. I should warn you, Sir Thief, or Nachtin, the boards call it, the dead citadel. Worse still, the whispering wastes do not lie empty. Rumors swirl of a figure stooped and shrouded in gray, face hidden, dragging a silver blade at his side, carving his way through the criminal element of two entire countries. None have divined its purpose, and it is only ever spoken one word, one most would not even recognize as a name. Sparrow, does this word not sound like the death bird culling the living dead at dawn? It is the name both ghouls and demons dare not say, for they know it means death for the undead. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hopefully I'm not muted, but it is great to see you guys on this fine Sunday afternoon where I'm at, or Monday morning in Australia, where the great, amazing, and magnificent Michael Bancroft is. Let's see who we've got here in the chat on this fine morning. And as I've mentioned before, first and foremost, Michael Bancroft, uh, ahead of us in the future, bringing in Monday. It is great to see you, Michael. John is here. John, it is fantastic to see you. And I should say this, Michael Bancroft, channel member a member of the cryptwalker phalanx michael bancroft let me make sure i'm clear about that it is great to see you brother we have got another and the first and foremost member of the cryptwalker phalanx here a channel member steven rockwood drawing numero uno it is great to see you brother i hope you are doing well today phil what is up phil it is great to see you let me see if i can add you to the broadcast there you are we have got a louise the viewer it is great to see you i hope you are doing well 
Uh, let's see who else we've got here. We've got Micra. Micra, it's great to see you. How are you doing, my friend? I hope you are doing well on this fine morning. Uh, let's see who else we have got here. We've got Sulcurialt. How are you doing? I don't even know if I pronounce that right. Every single time I pronounce it, I'm still trying to get hooked on phonics. It is great to see you. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Uh, great to see you in the chat. Let's see who else we've got here. And we've got Sark. How are you doing, Sark? It is great to see you, my friend. Hail to you. I hope you're having a great morning. American Comics Company. You're always in good company when American Comics Company is in the house. It's great to see you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. We've got Creative Fay Illustration. How are you doing? Yes, I am muted. That's terrifying. I hope I'm not muted. Um, it claimed I wasn't muted, but I might very well be. There is no telling. So we'll just have to see. Uh, let's see here. Um, anyone else in here? I'm going to be doing some. Um, I'm going to be feathering in and out. Got things around here to do. Well, that sounds perfectly fine. Uh, you are definitely allowed. Um, don't tell him he's muted. You guys are evil, evil to your very core. I say. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about what we're doing here. Uh, what is up, Tariki? It is good to see you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. Hail, greetings and salutations. I hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much for being the voice of honesty in this chat. Oh, my goodness. So, guys, we are painting some action today. And this is the stuff that I've been really looking forward to um, in terms of, you know, the kind of climax of the story of Nosferu. And it is going to take everything I have to make this stuff as um, as dynamic as I want it to be and as action-packed. And I haven't really... There's been some action in the book, but this is going to get really, really brutal. Um, and it's it's one of those things, you know, when you're working on this stuff and trying to figure out, you know, how is it all going to go and what's the perspective going to be. But I will tell you this, guys. I was thinking about this today. This book, if you count the pages as paintings just just as paintings not as multiple paintings this book is 33 brand spanking new new paintings not including the cover so i guess that makes it 34 uh and i don't even want to think about all the other ancillary stuff that goes into this and i was thinking to myself this book has been and is a massive massive undertaking when i think about artists and how few do painted comic books and then I think about how few do creator-owned, whether they're the writer or they're creating an entire world and all of that stuff. I think there's a reason for that, guys. I think there's a reason. Um, but it's it's so fun to do this stuff, and it's so fun to see where this stuff is getting. You know, that's, hey, listen, uh, hey, give, give me a sec. You know, I'll get there. It is great to see you, Crenshaw Al. How are you doing, my friend? I hope you are well. Um, but, man, it is coming along great. Watch and consider hitting the like button, indeed. Yeah. Let's let's make that happen, guys. We got four likes and twenty people watching. How is that possible? But uh, I hope everybody's having a great Sunday. I have been uh, really kind of putting a lot of cool, creative stuff into my head in the last uh, couple of days. Reading a lot of books, watching some really interesting um, YouTube videos on you know various history things and and audio books and that kind of thing, and just having a blast. You know, just kind of trying to fill my head up with as much creativity as possible. And there's a lot. There's a lot out there to be had if you know where to look. And obviously, that's what we do here on this channel. Uh, and then I'm also prepping for um, every Monday I'm going to be releasing an art video. So my first one was uh, the painting a tree. And so I've got one uh, I'm going to have to record and get ready for tomorrow. So there'll be another how to paint video coming up. Um, <laughs> I did my part, did you? I love that. That's great. And I'm glad to hear you're doing fine. Yes, indeed, guys. Yeah, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. But I was sitting around and I was thinking about, you know, writing stories and I was looking at comic books and I was looking at entertainment um, that I've got around me. Um, I picked up some comics that um, I haven't had in my possession, some graphic novels since the 90s. And I was looking at them and I don't, they're not mainstream fair. It was like Jason Pearson's body bags, you know. Um, and, uh, and I was looking at that kind of stuff and I was thinking, you know, comics really have not been as dynamic and entertaining as an art form, American comics, in such a long time that I just don't know. Um, all I can say is I think that this book is going to blow people away because of the action, because of the painting, because of the skill and the beauty of it. And the story is really, um, it's really beautiful. And it also has a beginning, middle and end. It has some kind of purpose. It's not nihilistic. Uh, but it's really creative. The the creatures and the villains and the settings are all really amazing. And I just thought, 
We haven't had that. We've been starved for that in American comics for so long. It's ridiculous. What is up, Hicks villain? How are you doing? It is great to have you in the house. How are you doing, my friend? And and I was looking at this stuff, and I was on a stream the other night with uh, with a few other people on Ethan's channel on um, on Comic Artist Pro Secrets, and you know we were talking a little bit about the the Joker storyline, which I really don't have any interest in, uh, and. You know, I mean, interested in the somewhat in the conversation, but just the I can't even believe what I'm seeing coming out of DC Comics. And, you know, I just look at that sort of stuff and I just think this is great. This is great that they're proving that no matter what properties you own, if you are not a good steward of them, it really doesn't matter. You can't do much with them. And so I started thinking about, you know, that the the burden on books like the ones that we're doing is that they make sense and that their their stories work, but also that they're better than that stuff. And that is not that difficult. Uh, physical media as a muse. Well, you know what's so funny about it? You're absolutely right in terms of the physical media thing. And something I would add to that is, I think that we are sort of, um, we're ready to see more, you know, um, God, I, I'm trying to think of the word I can use that is not the dreaded D word. Um, but we're, we want to see more range. We'll use that word. We want to see more range in the work that we're seeing, and everything kind of looks the same. I had a buddy of mine talking to me about um, how I felt about AI art the other day, and I was thinking to myself, um, yes, I am painting those pharaoh. Yes, I am, Aldilian. Aldi Aldian? Aldion? <laughs> Aldion? Oh, my God, I can't read. Aldion. Aldion. It's not happening. I'll die on this hill. Uh, Sean's painting nose pharaoh. Yes, he is. He's attempting to. It is good to see you, my friend, and good afternoon. Um, my God, that was painful. Even with my reading history, that was painful to experience. Um, good Lord, the letters were there. They just weren't working. Um, yeah, the nose pharaoh is going to be, nose pharaoh is going to be beautiful, guys. It really is going to be, um, it's not going to be like anything you've seen before. And, you know, something I was, I was, you know, thinking about when I was talking to my buddy is, this is my third art book that I've done. My third. And this is a comic book, obviously, but it's the third book I've published, Indiegogo Crowdfunding. And every one of those books, I would stand by. They're, they're beautiful books. I'm so proud of them. And it just seems like they've been moving, you know, up in quality every single time I've done one. But this one has gone up in quality in terms of complexity, that it's a story that I'm putting together. And it's it's just, it's a whole different kind of animal. So Shantan Jetty Art has produced, uh, this will be the third book that we've produced. And um, and I cannot wait to, you know, to get it out there. But I'm really proud of everything I've been able to do. And this is the first book I've really had the um, the assistance of, of CG with. And so it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. I know Michael and I have talked about this, but I think him and Mel were following my Instagram um, before he knew I was CG and, and during the time I launched these um, those two art books. So, I mean, I know I'm confident this is going to reproduce really well and look good. Um, I think maybe, you, you know, you should you should think about backing it. I really think you should, you know, it's important. Uh, Nosferu is unique, and thank you, Stephen Rockwood. Nosferu is unique. Any Comics Gate collection worth its salt is going to have this book. And I'll tell you this thing too much, uh, this truth. Guys, it's going to be a rough day today. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you this much, my friend, is that I think people aren't going to fully appreciate um, what we're doing here with this book in terms of um, all of you backers and everything until they see it in people's hands. Because, um, you know, there's a lot of people who have never um, who've never seen ev art books one or two. They haven't seen how this stuff reproduces. They haven't seen the story. But this is going to be something really special, man. Oh, John, thank you, John. Much love. Um, but it's, it's I mean, it's going to be a book that is is something to uh, something to enjoy in your collection. And I'm looking at, um, I'm always looking at Frank Frazetta's work because I'm a massive Frank Frazetta fan. And uh, looking at all of these great pulp painters. And it's been so long since we've been treated to something that is, you know, visually rich. Like things were done back in the old days of, of pulp. And I just think people are, are really hungry for it, that they want to see something that's like nothing they've ever seen before, uh, and certainly in their lifetime. And this is the birth of a new character and a new world that you're getting with this. And it's not, um, you know, when I think of painted comics and the comics I grew up on, they were never, um, I, I can't think of a one that was written by the person who was painting it, so and that it was a original creation. 
even with things like uh, John J. Muth stuff with Havoc, Wolverine, Meltdown, and some of the stuff that I saw, it was always you were trading off of Wolverine, or you were trading off of the X-Men, or you were trading off of these established characters. But there aren't a lot of people who do this. Every time you add one more level of complexity onto a project, what ends up happening is it, it, it doesn't add just one more thing. It almost adds exponential complexity onto it. So what you'll see is most people who do painted books either don't write them or um, they use, don't write them and they use established characters. So when you get somebody, you know, doing the entire thing and having to create the characters, design the costumes, build the world, name everything, and then paint it on top of that, it's a different animal. And I just don't know that um, outside of European comics, I don't think you ever see that really done in the mainstream at this point. Now, I could be wrong. Um... Let's see here. I like, uh, oh yeah, Maximum Pulp Orange Juice. I absolutely do too. It's so true. You're right. <laughs> that's that's my favorite kind of pulp. But no, it's it's um it's an amazing kind of thing to 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 do. But I also think that um it's just a fun monster story. Like there's uh or a fun hero superhero monster adventure story. And as it's um as it's come together, let me rotate this around. You guys are gonna see how I work. How I really work. Flip this stuff upside down. But as a um, monster adventure story, and with four more pages to go in this thing, it is, I'm, I, it's so cool, guys. So on this story, on this page right here, basically it's the fight commencing between Nosferu and Drake Thulu. And I've been watching these guys in this story and painting these guys in this story, not interacting for so long. What is up, Reagan Lodge? How are you doing? And how goes Wyatt, my friend? Let me know. I'd love to hear how Wyatt's doing. Uh, let's see here. Narwhal Compendium. That's right, my nose fair, bro. Uh, BDs, here comes Michael Bancroft running with the bells on. Hey, listen, we both love that stuff. I've been a fan of, um, of, uh, Bon Dessine since I was in college and got introduced to Mobius. And interestingly enough, see, what can I talk about that doesn't bring up heartbreak at this point? So, um, Mobius did concept art for a movie I really enjoyed when I was a kid called Willow. Yeah, hold the, uh, hold the the booze or the depression for uh or the um silent reverence for willow rest in peace um and it was amazing stuff that he did and when mobius passed away i was the only person who had them scanned in and i did a blog post about them so everybody was lifting the willow concept art of mobius off of my my blog that's how uh big into the stuff i was but uh, I got it, you know, I was exposed to it for the first time in college in a book called Mobius's, uh, Mobius Fusions. And just, I put that away in my head. One day I want to do a comic book that has these, you know, crazy wide shots of, of, you know, stone floors and stone walls and all of that stuff. And it's happening in this book. Like, this is a, it's like a Frazetta Art Nouveau comic. And I just cannot wait, you know, to, to wrap it up. But it's also, guys... The closer and hail Reagan Lodge. It's great to see you, my friend. Doing good. Back to work on Wyatt. Um, after a pretty tough several months. Well, my friend, I'm glad you are on the other side of it. As you know, Winston Churchill said, "When you're going through hell, just keep going." And happy New Year to you, my friend. Um, but this is the thing about it: the closer you get to the end, for anybody who is thinking about doing a comic book or even publishing an art book um, or any project like that, let me tell you this. Um. There are so many different stages you go through when you're doing this stuff that are, are hard to describe unless you've gone through them. And I don't want that to sound like deliberately, um, you know, opaque or whatever in terms of how I'm saying that. But um, it's one of those things where um, you get to the end of the project and there's the first phase where the work is so incredibly daunting but I think of it, it's like um, it's like you're walking away from a wall where there's a, a giant rubber band around your waist, and the closer you get to it, to that last bit of it, the the more you feel it, the more you feel that that pull. And in this case, I think it's just that overwhelming feeling of how wow, look at how much I've done, and I started this not knowing if this YouTube channel would have any subscribers on it, how I was going to build all this stuff, how I was going to promote it, who I was going to meet. Um, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, I went for a walk with my wife yesterday and I was thinking about, you know, CG, uh, CG team and, and being a part of CG team, which was amazing and all of the crazy stuff. Um, is that paint on your hands or are you just happy to see me? Both. 
both Eric the Guapo, of course. I can't believe you even have to say that. Uh, as a creator, I always respect and appreciate original characters and stories. I do too. I'm the same way. And it is great to see all of you guys check out Eric the Guapo's channel indeed. Um, but, you know, when I when I was walking with her and we were talking about this stuff, I said, you know, when I was on CG Team and when I was on, you know, um, gosh, you know, uh, the first time we did Double Impact, you know, when I was on Gabe's channel and we did that show, you know, it's if you had told us that those things were going to get to the point to where there were, you know, a thousand or so viewers, which to me is nuts. Hell, even a couple hundred that I get on this channel is, is still uh, amazes me. I wouldn't have believed you. And, you know, you take this leap of faith and you know you've got skill and if you've worked in the industry, you know you have experience and things like that. And I mean both in comics but more um, concepts and painted illustrations. But it is still a crazy leap. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. But I, it, there are days where I sit up and I, I kind of get up, go to my desk pretty much every morning. And I just sit down and look at this and go, this is this close to being finished. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it, man. It's, uh, yeah, I did. Um, if I may say, I feel like I started it um, before John Malin, before Ethan, you know, clearly it was me. I was, <laughs> I was somewhere in the shadows. Um, but yeah, man, it's, if I hope that, um, I would say that I hope that, that more people will want to try painted comics, but I really think that if you want to do painted comics, no one's going to stop you. And if you don't, you never will. Because <laughs> it's just, it's a weird thing to do. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I think people probably will. But I, I just think the pen and ink and line work way of doing comics is what most people are comfortable with. Uh, and I think maybe digital painting is kind of the same, but it's hard to say. I still see a lot of people doing line work. Um, I'd love to see uh, Kelsey do a painted comic book. I think that'd be cool to see. But then again, it's always easy to, to, to uh, fantasize about other people's doing work. <laughs> so I don't want to throw that on Kelsey. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, that has been the biggest part of this project is, is kind of putting together... You know, how is this thing going to come together um, and and how is it going to you know shape up? And so I've got, you know, the double page spread I was working on the other day over there. I've been um, I'm working on I'm working on getting the um, the next action page sorted out, which is going to be it's basically going to be. Um, let's see, how many more pages of action do I have to do after this? I've got about three more pages of action sequences and then a um a magical kind of um gosh how would i word it i've got some more action pages a magical sequence of something happening that i can't talk about because it's kind of the story and then um and then the finished final single page full page spread which is just a beautiful kind of nice uh uh sexy awesome frazetta ish image and then we're done. Then we go and we scan this thing in, letter it, and, uh, you know, I get all the script together, get that to Eric Weathers, and we go. It's crazy. What's up, Blackjack? Good to see you, my friend. Hail CG and hail to you, my friend. I hope you're doing well on this fine Sunday morning. But how are you guys doing? How's everything in your neck of the woods? Let me know. I am I am here to, uh, I am here to serve and paint. That's what I do. Let me see here. Got that. All right, cool. But, yeah, I've been reading I've been, uh, a lot of really interesting books listening to some audiobooks lately check out um razor fist series if you have not yet i've been really enjoying that and thinking about some paintings i want to do and i think for tomorrow's video uh that i'm going to do the art video some people have been asking me to do um some figure stuff but i think i'm going to blend figures and then something um funny and nerve-wracking so in razor fist's latest book um death mask he has got a wolf character in it, a humanoid wolf character in it, and uh, it's not a werewolf. It wears clothes, like it's it's a, got a culture, it's got a civilization, and I think that's one of the things I'm going to use for my anatomy painting uh, lesson, like how to do the, the figures, sort of like you know humanoid figures in paint for tomorrow, and it's going to be a death-defying attempt to not paint a furry. So God help us. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I think it's it's going to be rough, though. Um, let's see here. I'm planning on doing a pen and ink and colored pencil comic. Nice. That's fantastic. Uh, I wonder how you're going to use the colored pencils. Because some people do pen and ink, and then they do colored pencils on vellum and then overlay the black and white digitally. So 
I'm curious how you're going to do that. Sounds great. I love that stuff. Um, it was nice seeing you all the other night on Comic Skate Kids. Yeah, it was. I'm very young. You know, I'm I'm Noah's age, obviously. Yeah, it was fun. That was a riot, man. And it was great to be there for the news of the copyright. That was awesome. You won't give away the spoiler shot? Fine, I'll just go to the source and ask Malin. Yeah, just ask Malin. He'll know. He'll give away all the spoilers. He knows all this stuff. He started this gangster, you know, stuff. Um, yeah, definitely. There we go. Yeah, it was fun. I had a fun time on that show. That was a great time. But yeah, it's very... It, I used to have this... Um, used to have conversations with people about how tough it is to, to illustrate anything that is a humanoid animal and have it not turn into a furry. It is just... Oh my gosh, it is so difficult. And uh, I'm just like, how do you do it? And there's a way to do it, but it is really difficult. Really, really difficult. So it'll be fun uh, to see if that how that video uh, works, and it should be at the very least incredibly entertaining. Because uh, I'll be damned if I can make that thing uh, can make that thing work. We'll see. I'll show you. Do you guys want to see the drawing of the character I'm going to be working off of? What is up, Skunk Artworks? By the way, I was looking at some of your artwork on Twitter, man. You're crushing it. I know we've I've probably told you this before, and uh, I'm trying to think of all the people who've sung your praises. But man, great work. I love seeing that stuff. Um, rub the like button. Yeah, you got to do it, man. I love seeing the streams with new people and CG creators that don't always get uh, seen on larger channels. Yeah, it is. It's very cool, man. It's very cool. Um, Billy Tucci is fond of that technique. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely, man. That, that's a, He does some amazing stuff. I bet Reagan has some experience with that. You think? Possibly. Possibly. Um, it helps when they're not pink uh, and wearing <laughs> giant diaper. It's gonna. It may go there, guys. Look, I make no guarantees. All right, I make no guarantees. I define furries by the identity and sexual aspect. Those are fine, <laughs> guys. It's get. See how? Look at how. How? Oh, when you. I, it's like I ring a dinner bell. You guys were talking about Bond Destiny. Look at you guys. You guys are all into it. Hey, listen. My my pleasure to say it. I say it because it's true. When I see good stuff, I like to say that it's good. Um, it's the objectivist in me. But yeah, guys. Um, the character is. Um, let me see if I can show you the character. Ugh. Here, because I've got the book. I've got Razor Fist book, Death Mask, right here. Um, and let me see here if I can show you a picture of the character I'm going to try to illustrate. There's two characters I'm going to try to paint an action scene. Um, like, just sketch it out and show you guys how I work. But where is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. So it's like a wolf-like character right here. And so we'll see how it goes, guys. We're going to see how it goes. Wish me luck. I've painted a couple of um, Razor Fist characters, but I've never painted um, one of those. That's drifting into kind of more high fantasy sort of stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Um, it could be a disaster, but it will be entertaining, you know. But people, you know, when when you start talking about furries and anthros and I don't see, it's so funny. All of those terms changed. So I had students who were like, um, who would go, uh, "Oh yeah, they do." this kind of art or furry art and, and then someone's like oh no it's not furry art anymore it's anthro art furry art means something more horrific and i was going okay look i'm old man i don't know how all of this stuff works okay i'm not here to judge anybody's journey you know whatever you know whatever fickles your tansy just enjoy it but um when i draw those things i'm always trying to look for um how i can make them work in my style and so I draw werewolves, but this character is not like one of my werewolf characters. My werewolves are monsters. So I have to figure out a way to do it to where it's going to, you know, be something that is is visually compelling in a fantasy sense. Like, and it's, yeah, whoever controls the language. That's right. That's right. I love that. Creative Faye. Good luck. Uh, when, you, when I read that just now, I heard the uh, guy from Taken. I want you to know I'm going to be doing a painting video. I'm going to attempt not to to paint a furry and if you're careful you'll watch it good luck <laughs> that's what i heard man it was scary stuff uh hey what's up 40 percent zed how are you doing it's a pleasure and you are welcome to judge my friend channel member general piggy is here in the house i doff my cap to you my friend i hope you are doing well and liberty indeed liberty always guys always that's what we're about on this channel man so yeah, you guys are going to have to wish me some serious luck for that because things can go very sideways quite often. 
Um, one does not just simply attempt to paint an anthro. Okay, people? It's just like, you just got to be careful. Got to be careful with how it goes. It's difficult stuff, kids. Especially in my style, because um, you have to make it this kind of perfect mixture. Like, everybody kind of knows what a werewolf looks like, but it's very hard to design one, which seems absurd, considering the rules are so well laid out, right? I mean, it's it's werewolf, half man, half wolf. And then you look at American Werewolf in London, you look at the howling werewolves, and they're one thing, and then you look at the ones from Underworld, and they're another thing altogether. And I, I often think it's like, yeah, it sounds easy, just like doing fantasy paintings. But for me, when it comes to um, art, uh, fantasy and science fiction are the genres where um, entertainment media, or I should say empires, go to die. Because they are very difficult to do. For every Harry Potter book that comes out, for every you know Lord of the Rings or, or uh, Game of Thrones or whatever, again, whatever stuff you're into that comes out, there's a whole bunch that don't work. And I think that horror tends to be a really, you know, pretty safe genre in some regards. It's not easy. Um, but it's, it's you know, it's not as tough as high fantasy art. And superhero genre, which is a little bit what this is, pulp, superhero, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very hard to have animals that are humanoid if you don't, you know, get that world to work as well as you can. Like, Reagan Lodge is doing some really cool stuff with Wyatt. Um, I've seen that stuff, and it's very much like a European book. I think a Black Sad, which is absolutely incredible for people who are, are do not know Black Sad. Oh my gosh, tons of people came in and the chat froze on me. Sorry about that. I'll judge for both of us. I, I prefer you do, my friend. I don't want that responsibility. Uh, Sol uh, Curialt uh, says... Furries are nearly an affront to the concept of anthropomorphism. I gotcha. Okay, I got it. Uh, it's good to see you, man. Thank you for, for more wise words. Sheeple Hunters here. Hail Shoth, hail chat. Hail to you, my friend. I hope you're doing well this morning. Everybody is saying hello. Oink, oink, indeed. Uh, let's see here. Animal characters have been used throughout history, so it really depends on how it serves the story. Yeah, no kidding. And uh, you're amen, and, and you're absolutely right. Like, I was thinking about, you know, Anubis and Egyptian and uh, mythology and religion and culture, and I just went, I, it's, it's, nah, it's easy. I knew you'd say that, Stephen Rockwood. It's it's always there, and they're another thing. There you go. Salutations, my friends. Indeed, indeed. Um, but it's, yeah, it's one of those things to where, um, and yes, indeed, check out all the links, guys. Please check out all of the links. Um, but it's one of those things to where when you see people do it really well, like in Black Sad, you go, holy cow. You know, it's it's it comes down to that skill, that skill of, of you know, the, the artist who is doing it. And a uh, really big fan of, of what those guys do. And so we always have to figure out what it is. And since um, the fun thing to me about painting other people's characters and stuff um, is, you know, getting painting something I wouldn't normally paint on my own. And so, um, you know, with Razor Fist, he gives me a lot of stuff. Like, it's kind of, um, it's sort of pulp. It's a little bit, um, it's definitely got some noir to it. But it really is, um, this second book is very high fantasy very high fantasy so it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes and uh you guys can be there for the train wreck depending on how that goes you know you'll see how i work through it and uh god help me amen and pass the ammo that's exactly right praise the lord and pass the ammunition indeed um but yeah i mean razor fist is um i was watching him stream the other night he was uh, playing a video game and uh, with his friend and waxing um philosophically as he often does and uh it was interesting stuff but um I, I just want to try to get, um, I try to picture the characters, even when there's illustrations, I try to picture the characters in my head and then, you know, kind of say, all right, well, what would I, what would I do with that? Like, how could I bring, you know, empathy? Because the character is really well written and there's just, um, you know, the way the story unfolds, you have a lot of empathy for this character and I want to make sure I capture that somehow. And so that's really the goal for me, you know, when I'm, I'm looking at it and trying to figure out what I'm going to do, so... Like I said, we'll see how that goes. Um, it might be a nightmare. Now I just got to come up with what the title of the stream is going to be. Um, <laughs> like, oh, Lord. That'll be funny. But, you know, it's the same thing when I'm working on Eric July stuff as well. It's like, you know, and, I, and I'll say, oh, I want to do a painting of one of Eric July's characters. Um, 
I'll go, all right, well, this is like a straight superhero character, and, and it's it's kind of more, it's a little bit more real world, a little bit more gritty, how am I going to approach this? And so that's kind of that's kind of the way I'm looking at it when I do this stuff. Oh, wait, scrolling up, uh, oh, scrolling up to, uh, I see anthropomorphic being <laughs> discussed. Hmm. Oh, yeah, there's a lot happening. There's like, hey, thanks for the shout out. Had to step away. Hey, of course, man. Look at these people. John's good people. I trust John. Uh, Shanth was mentioning your work. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We all love a good train wreck. I should watch the Fugitive again. Yes, indeed. Listen, I, I, the Fugitive's got nothing on me. Wait till you see how that stream goes, man. That's going to be something beautiful. Uh, but I love, I love creature designs, and I like when I, you know, when I was a kid and I was, I was making artwork and and doing all the various things, you know, that I, I'm interested in doing. Um, I always loved the challenge of trying to take something that um, was was just not something I typically do and say, all right, how would I, how am I going to tackle this? How am I going to put this together? And uh, that to me strikes me as a, a really fun thing to do. Razor Fist writes some really cool imagery, and he has such a strong voice in terms of how he goes about his stuff that, um, you know, you know exactly what he wants to do. I mean, for me, there's a, there's a bunch of CG projects that have, have offered that for me too. I think Inglorious Rex painting Shane stuff oh, was, was fun. Um, painting, uh, Dan Fraga's, uh, black flag stuff. That was a fun thing to paint, which that painting should be in somebody's home by now. Um, what day is it today? Eighth or ninth? I, I think some of those paintings should have arrived already that, uh, from the auction. So I can't wait to see uh, how those come through. Although I know one was going to Hawaii, and that was a bit of a fortune to send, but it was worth it um, to get it out to the uh, person who got it. Yes, indeed. Let's see. It serves a purpose. That's right. Yes. Um, wisdom keeps yourself out of situations where you need it. Furry strike me as one of those situations. Well, you know. Um, <laughs> when Shane drinks. I would rather see you take... Oh, gosh. I've, well, I have painted Salamandroid. Have you seen my Salamandroid, Sheeple Hunter? That is actually in the possession of of uh of uh, a fan who um who bought that original painting but uh this is my salamandroid right here let's turn off this light real quick from uh cyber frog trading cards this is number uh 19 i guess it is but uh puzzle piece cards and so that right there is my is my salamandroid let's see if it focuses there you go there you go <laughs> what's up shave i see you in the chat shave i see you in the chat uh yeah I have a question about color. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to hear it, Shave. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, my friend. You're very welcome. Yeah. Um, I've got many furries in my audience, but they tend to be pretty sane. See, again, you're using that term in a way to where I always thought it was a drawing thing. So I, or it was like an art thing, but I, I'm realizing it's far more than that. That I am my, as Michael would say, my sweet summer child uh, mentality. I was unaware um, yes, you do have that card, Stephen Rockwood. Let me, that's one of the things I am the most proud of that I've done in Comicsgate, um, is I think I, I crushed that card. I think I did a really, um, a solid take on it. And now when I say that, let me be clear, it was really nerve wracking. And I thank God that, um, Dale Keown had not done his, his, uh, Salamandroid artwork yet, because I would have been, uh, really intimidated by that because Dale just, does an incredible salamandroid but um yeah i'm pretty proud of how my card stacks up man i think it came out really great and uh and it was a blast to do and i was really appreciative um of ethan you know uh hiring me to do that card it was a lot of fun i like doing um i really do enjoy doing um you know work for creators and getting commissions from creators because it's the only work i really am interested in doing right now is uh growing stuff for for the indie scene i don't really care much for the mainstream stream stuff at the moment because it just feels so uh so overly um managed by bureaucrats for lack of a better way of putting it and when i do artwork i want to paint stuff i want to be free to do something really great really good and um i don't think i i don't find i feel that way when i'm doing stuff that's corporate it just doesn't um you know corporate characters i mean it's just like i don't even recognize that stuff anymore anyway but I'd rather be doing stuff for uh, for the indie scene. I mean, that's why you see me painting, you know, um, Razor Fist's, you know, uh, characters and why you see me painting Eric July stuff. I mean, I think you guys probably have seen this one already, um, but this is um, that a painting in progress of uh, Isom. Let me see if I can get that focus there. There you go. So this is a painting I'm doing right now. It's a 16 by 20 that I'm doing just for fun here. And uh, got some really cool debris on it. 
Um, and then I've got, um, oh, let's see where else I put them. Oh, I found that book Rob was asking me to show the other day. So if Rob shows up, I have that for him. These are two paintings um, that I did on 11 by 14 of Razor Fist's world right there. And so this is what those paintings look like. Uh, this was for his first book, for those of you guys who've seen those. And then here's another character right there of Razor Fist. So, and these two are for sale, actually. So those two are 500 each. Um, so if people want to purchase those, you can let me know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've been just working on a ton, a ton of stuff, just having fun. Uh, oxidation, Shane, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Um, additionally, why does purple food like grape juice? <laughs> I'm not reading that, shave. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Some people are getting fooled, guys. It's shave. No when it's shave. What's up, Past Master Dan? How are you doing, my friend? I hope you are well. I bow to you, Past Master Dan. Uh, it's great to see you, my friend. I think Ethan plans to uh, just use it to uh, chase off the anti-CG ruiners. I think it works, yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, we've descended into madness. As long as you honor CG standards, he's open to about anyone. Um, oh yes, I know what you're saying. I got you. I just caught up in my mind with the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think that the, the danger was sort of, or the potential danger was revealed with the... Uh, you know, with people who just want to take these things and make it, you know, continue to defame them by uh, dis disingenuously using them, let alone using them, you know, <laughs> using them without any kind of, uh, for an in an attempt to uh, fraudulently portray a group of people a certain way. And so I'm really was glad to hear that. I don't think that, um, I mean, I can't speak for my, it's, it's, I mean, as far as the law is concerned, he owns the copyright, he can do with it what he wishes, but... I think that the, the, you know, my sense of it was from the, the start in terms of how he talked about it, that his goal was to ensure that this did not get used by people in a way that was, um, frankly, completely against what this whole thing is about. And that's why they wanted it. They wanted it for that reason. It was very malicious. But like I said, I hope it was worth it to them because it. I don't think it's going to work out too great for them. So good luck, kids. Uh F around and find out, as they say. All right? And it was nice to be there for that. It was nice to be there to... Because I know it's been... Um, it's a very weird thing to hate something so much that you want to misrepresent it, like, as a goal in your life. I, I don't know if I'll ever understand that. I mean, I've got, I've got a family, and I've got, you know, work that I've got to get done, and I've got a skill set that I have to employ in order to make as much money as I can for my family. We are not... Um, we're not millionaires. We work really, really hard for the things that we have, and we do things, and, and it doesn't factor into our day. Oh, let's go and try to take something that somebody cares about and just burn it to the ground. That's not that's not something that we do. Um, you know, and, and Eric July was talking about, you know, someone saying something pretty awful, at least in my opinion. I mean, Eric can take it uh, on Twitter, basically saying, I'm praying for his failure or something like that. And Eric was like, who are you praying to in that case? Uh, Eric July and I just think that's a, it's just a sad it's a sad way to live it's a sad thing to uh, to try to be motivated by something that that messed up but you know what are you gonna do <laughs> what are you guys trying to do it's Sunday only cost uh, yeah Poulter four million amen yeah I hope he enjoys it and yes indeed Eric July guys I'm a channel member of Eric July so anyway um, what was that you were saying about boobs listen I've got your back man right there okay just trust me trust me you know, we got this dog. We got this dog. Oh, pronounced bull. Got it. Bull. That makes total sense to me. Indeed. <laughs> the baffling desire to portray a false image of what you aren't. Yes, indeed. Trust fund babies with too much time on their hands. Yeah. And but you gotta there's gotta be something I mean I, I remember when um when Riketa used to say this a lot, but the, there's gotta be something broken in you, you know? I mean when when I was on the show with uh, with Gabe and Jericho, um, and we were talking about the Book of Eli, and what a beautiful story it was. We're laughing our heads off at our own silliness, and we're doing whatever we do. But you know, the we're, we have so much respect for that movie, and so much respect for the stuff that we talk about. That we only really, um, if we laugh about any particular thing, like in Jericho's case, being a naval man when he sees something in under siege that is not navy accurate. I'm sure we've got some military folks who know what I'm talking about here. Um, he's just kind of like, you know, he laughs about it, but it's not like it's, it's malicious. 
the idea of trying to, you know, uh, misrepresent yourself as someone you're not, like maybe even Shane Davis. Wait a second. I don't know if I like where this is going. We love you, Shave. <laughs> um, I wish I had a trust fund. Believe me, if, if it does that to people, I guess I bet we don't want that. Lottery tickets are my trust fund. Amen. That's right. I know. I'm going to get it done. Let me tell you. Uh, th this book is, we got you covered, man. We've got you covered. And James Lee's channel right there. Hail James Lee. Um, yeah, doing uh, the Steins, doing fantastic work there. Um, one day I will make that withdrawal. Yes, you will. And, and remember, I was always your friend when you do. Um, even, uh, even Arnie popped by for a few questions. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, if you have not heard Jericho Green's Arnold Schwarzenegger imitation, you are missing out. Uh, you, you cannot believe how ridiculously good it is. I mean, he just, it's like he goes into that character. <laughs> so nuts, man. He does. He's, he's just, he could turn it on and off. I don't know if it's, I, I'm sure it's because his radio career, you know, came out of his ability to do that. But you just, sometimes you just are amazed. You know, he's got a great voice, but he's also got the ability to just shift his voice over and, and do characters so well, man. Holy cow, is he good. And it's it's just so fun to do that show with those guys, man. I mean, when I reached out to Gabe about, you know, our the Van Damme backdrop he had and all that stuff, we had no idea where this whole thing was going to go. And it's the same thing when I came into uh, to Comicsgate and I was doing intros for Ethan and those videos. And I think I, I was talking to Kelsey on the phone, and I think Kelsey was telling me that he did... Um, a lot of the um, early videos for Ethan, so it's it's weird how um, how many of us have just done you know stuff here and there to kind of just try to help this whole thing along, and to, for it to be to the point it's at right now is is really great to see. You know, it's great to see so many people and and backing books and just getting cool products. I've got a whole stack of Comicsgate books, you know, in my house. I read um, I read uh, I saw him for the first time. Um, or second time, I'm sorry, a couple of days ago. And um, it was the first time in a while I had read it, actually. And uh, it was to prep for, for just doing that painted sketch. And it was it was a blast, man. It was a blast to do that and to look at all the cool stuff coming out. Um, my favorite scene from that movie is the firefight. Yes, the firefight in the cannibal's house with the crank um, uh, Gatling gun. That was unbelievable, man. That was a crazy, crazy sequence. Yeah, and Jericho Green, guys, check him out. He is... Uh, He'll sell you the whole seat, but you only need the edge. Uh, that's for sure. Let me see here. Okay, so I've got this and this, and now we're going to have some fun here. So you got to go into Bob Ross voice every, like, five seconds when you're doing this stuff. All right, let's have some fun, kids. All right, let's see where this goes. But, you know, it's um, I love creature designers, and I love creatures, and I love um, monsters. Um, I sent a super chat into a show I like to watch or a channel I like to watch called the Grim Life Collective. And they've been doing their show for a long time. And I just said, man, I love watching your channel when uh, when I'm painting. And it really is just the, you know, you grind away at this stuff and you kind of, it all sort of starts to uh, to direct you at a certain point, you know. And, and like in terms of um, what, you know, what, uh, what people want to see, but also what you really enjoy doing. And sometimes it takes a little while to figure those things out. And right now for me... Um, I feel like I figured that out in terms of the artwork and the painting. Yes, indeed. Good damn morning, Americans, is what he always says. Hail Jericho Green. Uh, CG creates backlash, backlash of hate from the Wokies, and backlash of love within CG. You're right. It's like when they push on us, it's like, and this is the other other thing I would say. It's It's like drawing back a bow, you know? The resistance that we face is like drawing back a bow. The more resistance they present to us, the more it, it propels us forward because you have to know why you're doing it there are there are cheaper and less uh complicated and labor intensive ways to make money than drawing comics and certainly than painting comics so if you're in here you're in here because you care about it and um i like to think about the time when i was looking at this project and i had god it makes me feel like i'm going to hyperventilate to think about it um but i had four or five pages done and I had this whole book in front of me that I was did not know how, what those pages. I knew about what it was going to be, but it's changed a lot and it's improved a lot. But I did not know where this was going, guys. I had no idea. And to be here with, instead of having four pages done and trying to think about how the hell I was going to paint this entire book, to have four pages left 
is incredible, guys. Four pages left. Think about that for a minute, how how big that is, man. Uh, yeah, I love monsters and creatures, too, though. I'm not into giant monsters. Well, you know, I, I when Shane draws them, I'm definitely into it. I like kaiju, I would say. Um, I definitely would say that. I'm a super big fan of kaiju. Love that stuff, guys. And thank you for hitting the like button, everybody. We've got 22 people watching right now, 25 likes. Thank you guys for being here on a fine Sunday. Um, we know you have a lot of choices when you fly. We appreciate you for flying Shant and Jetty Air. And again, if you're new to this channel, my name is Shanth and Jetty, and this is Shanth and Jetty Art. And we are painting um, an action sequence and a page from Nosferu the Crypt Walker. My first issue with a new character. It is a Indiegogo campaign. The link is in the description. And it is in demand. And uh, it is four pages from being completed. The artwork will be done um, in four pages, which I cannot wait. And then I'm going to sit down and probably... I don't know what I'm going to feel. It's going to be overwhelming. I'll tell you that right now. That's some my, my wife and I, we went for a walk the other day, uh, and I was telling her, I go, the closer I get to, you know, the end of this thing, the more the gravity of it hits me. Because the thing about doing work, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. For any of you guys who are older parents, you might know, I am not. I've got two 17-year-olds, but I don't have, like, you know, I haven't had anybody married off yet or, you know, buy their own home. Um... There's this moment where the emotion of all of the work, all of the hours, all of the time you've put in and you see them accomplish something and you realize that you can kind of relax a little bit and that you're not, you know, you will always feel 100% responsible for them in terms of you'll love them very intensely, but you realize now they're they're on their own and they're starting to spread their, their wings. And um, it's really emotional. It's like, and that's how it feels about this, this book. That as I get closer and closer to the end, the anxiety of, of is it going to fund? Is the YouTube channel going to grow? Am I going to be able to make any kind of money to make it easier for us to make this book? Because, um, oh my God, I mean, it, it's every dollar counts. Every backer counts. Um, to where I'm at right now, it's the relief is starting to creep in. I'm fighting it, but it's starting to creep in. Uh, I will be doing my fulfillment here, so God be with me is all I can say. But, you know, you guys will see it because I'll be talking about it on this channel. I've got, I mean, the only person, like, we, this would not be possible. This book would not be possible if I wasn't doing the artwork and everything for it. Like, I, there's no way. Um, this is, it goes, it's not about making a, um, a profit at the numbers that we're at. It's about not going broke. It's about making sure you have enough to get the thing done and get it done well. So it's, um, I, I remember I looked at the numbers and we crunched the numbers and I go, if everything, like if this book does not do well, could I get the whole thing done? You know, by myself, I have to do this by myself. And thank God you guys have backed the book to the point to where I can have Eric Weathers, you know, do the lettering, that's some great help. But yeah, I'm gonna be doing fulfillment because I've got to sign, um, I've got to sign every book. Every book is signed, and there's a signatory page in every book. I've got a whole bunch of those inked head sketches inside the book to do. So yeah, it's got to all come through me, guys. That's how it's got to go. Five hundred and thirty-nine backers. Stephen Rockwood, thank you for always reminding me of that. I'm so proud of that, guys, and I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. A reflection of the energy which is unabsorbed, utilized at the time. Clap indeed. Amen. I do appreciate that, my friend. I really do. Laugh out loud. Don't you um don't you know what you do, what you will do? You are not going to have a movement to worry about that. A moment to worry about. You're right, that's true. I won't have a moment to worry about that. Yeah. Uh uh yeah. It's 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 just you go. We just go. I mean we've done uh we've done two other books, but um you know how Comic Skate is, man. It's like it's it's always bigger, it's always better and uh I am so grateful for you guys and for making this project great. And I know people, when people hear about this book, and they will, uh, but when people hear about this book and they go, what is this thing? What is this? You guys are going to be remembering and be a part of the the moment that this, you know, was a, you know was launched and the moment that this thing was just a crowdfunded book by one guy sitting at a desk hanging out with you guys, working his tail off. And it is a, if I didn't have... Um, my amazing wife and my family and and everybody around me. That's right. Did you hear that from the other room? She just said that. That's right from the other room. I like that. Uh, <laughs> but if I didn't have my amazing wife with me, um, my smoking hot wife, 
um, I would uh, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to to have the energy to do this because it is just a lot of sitting here, and you guys are a huge part of that. You guys come in and hang out in these streams. I mean, I remember when I would look at, you know, oh, how many people are watching, and it was one or zero. And then I'd realize it was me because I was checking the stream in another window so no one was watching. Those are the, t those are the times, man. Those are the times you remember. And uh, that's the fun bit of it. Uh, don't know what you will do. Yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, I already read that, but it cracks me up. Um, yeah, lots of love, lots of laughter here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. She's great stuff. Who else is going to mow our lawns? Is Michael Bancroft. That's right. Hail Mel, indeed. Um, how many times are we to hear Nosfero? How did you not tell me about this? Yeah, I'm sorry, John. There's this book I'm working on called Nosfero the Crypt Walker. John says, bow to Mrs. and Jetty. Uh, yes, indeed. Boy, that's some lore. Have you guys realized how, I'm sure you have, how uh, rich the lore is at this point? Like, there's stuff now that it means its own stuff. You know, like, I remember the, uh, I remember the bow, and, uh, I remember, uh, when it became a thing. I remember Ethan Efap in that video, and just going, oh my lord, what am I watching? It reminded me of, um, it reminded me of, uh, Chris Farley as, uh, Matt Foley motivational speaker. That was the weirdest video I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, that was some strange stuff. Oh God, these were weird times. I'm sure we'll have more, but those were those were special. Some of those times were special. There we go. Yeah, this is nuts, guys. This is gonna really, this is really gonna be a world like every single one of these is a painting. And one of the things that I found um, recently is I've been doing a lot of research on The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and that stuff. One more man, better hope, never meets Mel. That's right. Hey, what's up, Andrew Wilson? How are you doing, my friend? And Jetty is not petty. Brush on the ready and hand so steady. Shanth, I'm the lyrical miracle. You are, Andrew Wilson. I've said it for years. And by the way, I love your icon. You know that. I love They Live. Great movie. I've come in here to chew bubblegum and paint comics, and I'm all out of bubblegum. That's how that goes. Uh, and yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Comics gate lore to be legend. It absolutely is. Avow the bow, indeed. And hail to my brother, Jeremy, the man, the legend, Ice and Fire. Love you, boss. But yeah, I mean, these are all the people who, you know, open doors for you when you're you're doing this stuff and, and you know, help you, help you to see a way forward. And we were kind of, there's all these classes in Comics Gate where it's like, um, you know, you kind of come up together and you you do your stuff. And I was sort of between. I feel like I was kind of between two two different groups of people. Um, so I was like the tail end of a group of uh, of people who had launched their first books and were in between their first and second. So it's it's been kind of nice to be, uh, and I'm very grateful for being embraced by all you crazy people, you know, who were here at the time. As we, I mean, geez, I mean, watching Jeremy's uh, Lord Crack at 33 back in the day, his channel blow up was incredible. It was so great to see because, I mean, he was talking about George R. R. Martin and his love of that stuff for, gosh, as long as I can remember, man. What a good dude. And a fellow New England brother. Gotta love it. You can just see how I'm just kind of carving into the values and getting that, um, getting that, that, uh, those edges there. Those edges so that people can see it. And Nosferu has already taken out one of those vampires down there, so I gotta make sure I keep track of the bodies. Uh, Mrs. Njeti had a link. You better believe I'd be singing it. That's right. You'd be you'd be showing links to her stuff. Absolutely. I know you would. You guys are the best. Um, oh, yeah. They Live, another great film, Obey. Yeah, it is. And great action sequence. I love... Um, I'm a massive fan of Keith David um, in his comedic work, in his serious work, in his drama work. He's great in The Thing. Um, he's, he's, he's excellent in everything. I actually don't know if I've ever seen Spawn in the animated series. I don't know if I've seen a bad Keith David performance. I mean, he, I'm sure he's been in some horrific movies at some point, but see, it's funny. The ones that people might describe as bad, I think, are cult classics. Like, I love Men at Work, and he was great in that. There are several things that are sacred in this world, my friend. One of them happens to be another man's fries. I'm sorry, that is the greatest line in any movie, period. That's Shakespeare right there, guys. That is Shakespeare. All right, let's see what we got going on here. All right, Stephen Rockwood drawing Lucent 1. Yes, indeed. Puzzles. Guys, you got to back Lucent 1 if you haven't got it. It is such a great book. 
you know, betwixt and between. Indeed it is. Yeah, um, I'm really happy to see Noah getting uh, more backers too. Yeah, he got to 10K. Congratulations, Noah, man. You know, I mean, that's the fun thing about it. Yeah, Noah, Noah is uh, putting in the earn, um, the earnest work or earnest work. You mean? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's some great stuff. Yeah, men at work, indeed, creative, uh, creative fay. Yeah, um, yeah, Noah. I was there when Noah hit um, when he hit 10K on the stream that we found out about the Comicsgate um, uh, trademark, which was great. It was a really cool night, man. And you know, of course, it's like I look at Noah, and Noah is my son's age, so. It's it's hard not to be uh, not to be excited about seeing somebody that age doing well and uh, working hard and, and meeting good people who are, are helpful. Um, if you're a parent, I know you you know what I'm talking about. It's it's um you know it's it's important. It's it's the stuff that that uh, that you kind of you know you hope that young people are going to find um, some people who can be supportive and and can help them in in you know uh, particularly in a specialized professional field with the things they need to get done. And, and Ethan and Comicsgate have been really supportive of him and Michael Bancroft and everybody. I mean, he's been around for a while. I've seen him, uh, he's been in this stream for that matter. So it's, yeah, it's great to see people doing well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, I like seeing the, the younger generation actually have mentors and, and, and certainly people who are, are pulling for them. I think it's important, especially if they work hard too. I mean, that's the other thing. It's not like he's just some kid, you know, who's not doing any work. He's done a ton of comic books, man. He's done a ton of stuff, and you gotta go off of the work. You gotta measure the work. When I was his age, I was doing that kind of work too, and so I know what's involved. You do it because you're passionate about it, you know. And it's like you, all you gotta do when you've got skill and work ethic is make sure you keep a level head about everything and 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 proceed. That's the biggest thing about it. And everybody you see here, I know Ethan was doing comics at that age. I was doing comics at that age, you know. And it's uh, it it can be a long road in a good sense if you let it be. You know, if you keep doing that work and you guys are here and and supporting us and God bless you, man. God bless you for that. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Puzzlegate 2.0. You knew it was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. Keith, I didn't take it, <laughs> take it out for air, David. <laughs> you guys are killing me. And yes, there's NTM Comics' channel and then NTM Comics' Mavericks volume too. Uh, looks great. And I saw the pen and ink stuff he did on that uh, dull page spread. Looks fantastic, man. That looks great. You know, it's, uh, it, it, I couldn't see it, uh, the camera, it was a little bit hard to see, but it kind of reminded me of, um, of, uh, Bernie Wrightson's, uh, stuff that he did with, uh, Frankenstein, just lots of pen and ink detail. Um, and I know, actually, I'm trying to remember if he said he was, I, I, I'm not, I know he likes, you know, he doesn't have a problem with him. And I know he's a definitely a big Brian Ballin fan, but, um, but I don't know if Ethan, uh, I know Ethan's met Bernie Wrightson, but I don't know if he was a big influence on his stuff. But I, I wonder because I love Bernie Wrightson's stuff. He's a he's an influence on me for sure. Uh, he's he's great, man. I remember seeing his Frankenstein stuff in college, and my mind was blown. I was just like, this guy is incredible. This guy might be one of the best you know artists I'd ever seen, and still holds up. Let's move that camera just a little bit closer by uh, you know our old school traditional zoom because I just realized it's easier. There's that focus. It's easier for you guys to see what I'm up to when I have it like that. But yeah, I love Bernie Wrightson stuff. Bernie Wrightson's so good, man. Um, when I was his age, I was working um, enough to buy comics. And uh, what is that? Is it Jinko jeans? I can't tell. Um, but holy cow. Yeah. I don't, I'm trying to remember what, I, what jobs I had when I was that age. I had a couple different jobs when I was that age. But um, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy how time flies. And it really is like the biggest thing is just the discipline, the discipline of, of continuing to do it. Um, I don't, I always say this, that um, it's great if you have people encouraging you to do your art, but it's not essential. You just have to need to do it. Um, I always think it's, it's fantastic when people encourage people. But um, what I have seen is that discipline and hard work over time is, um, I used to say this as an art teacher uh, when I was teaching or an art professor. Uh, people would ask me, you know, what my attitude was. And I said, if you give me a student with talent and a student with um, uh, but no work ethic and you give me a student with work ethic um, and decent talent, uh, then it's like I'm always going to bet on the decent talent student. They always do better. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That's really all it comes down to. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yep. 32 of. <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's wild stuff. I remember, uh, that's right, good jeans. I was uh, mid to late 90s. See, that missed me. That just missed me. Because I was thinking about jeans in the 80s, I think it was. But who's to say? Um, let's see. Shanth, kind of um, mind warp to meet your future inspiration while you are still unaware. Ethan got to meet so many starting young. Yes, he did. You're right. It's true. And and I, I did too, man. I was lucky. I got to meet um, Dave Stevens and... You know, by the way, and I have to say this, guys. This is one of the coolest stuff. Yeah, while they sleep, we do work, John. Amen. One of the coolest things about Comicsgate is that you really do get to meet creators here. You get to meet creators. So there's a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, I, I was there. Oh, you know, we were one time. Shanth was painting those Pharaoh live on YouTube. You can still find those videos. I was in the chat. That's me right there. I mean, that's going to be it. Because this book is too pretty to not succeed. This book is pretty. It's creative. It's inspired. I mean, shoot, guys. If I, if I would tell you what, I would have slept a lot better with this decision if I had known I had this in me. But you guys bring it out of me, man. Comicsgate, and and frankly, the the stress of having to do it all yourself, man, and having to like you've got people who will help you promote, but at the end of the day, no one is going to finish your pages for you. No one is going to finish your pages. No one's going to write your story if you get lost in. Um, you know, people talk about analysis paralysis. I just think it is um, just a fear of, of finishing it, having it come out, and having it be a thing. It's it's. I think that can get artists a lot of times. And um, you have to just kind of, you know, I, that's why it was important to me to get those first two art books under my belt because I knew, I was like, okay, I know how to do this stuff. I can go to the audience and I can say, Look, I know how to finish things. I know how to get things done. But holy cow, is it stressful. Mr. Monkey Boy, 1969. I doff my cap to you, sir. It's great to see you. And of course, all. That's right. Uh, let's see who else here. Hello, Mike likes tacos. It's great to see you, Mike likes tacos. How are you guys doing? My God, look at all the likes are flying in this chat. You guys are amazing. Um, I do appreciate it. There you go. I'm pretty. I'm a bad man. That's right. Gotta love Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I was watching uh, Javante, da Javante Davis uh, the other night, uh, and he was kicking ass. He's a hell of a good boxer. But I love the fight game. Love boxing, guys. Absolutely love boxing. I've been a boxing fan for as long as I can remember, and I follow it, and it's great stuff. I've been a boxing fan. The only thing I've been a fan of longer than boxing has been actually two, a couple things. Star Wars, uh, rest in peace, and um, comics. And then after that, it's boxing. Those are the things I loved the most when I was growing up, when I was coming up. So now we got to make uh, Drake Thulu his wonderful sort of slimy salamandery blue color. There we go. And get some cool colors on there. And that's where you can start to see things really pop when you look at this stuff. What is up, Bordeaux? How are you doing, my friend? Hail to you. I hope you are doing well. Um, does depend on how the story flows it absolutely does depend on how the story flows yeah and it's weird because boxing i think i'm uh, related to tyson fury hell that's a hell of a good thing to be related to tyson fury's the man he moves amazingly in the ring sean likes the blood sports i certainly do yeah i listen to whenever i need inspiration on how to go about my work i listen to khabib talk and then i go i need to get it together <laughs> khabib is khabib is hardcore man he takes uh he takes everything he does incredibly seriously he either is 100% in or he ain't having it. But yeah, I love that kind of stuff, man. I love I love the fight game and I love, uh, yeah, I love it all. Love comedy because it, it takes all, like the art is, art is like stand-up comedy in some senses. Uh, so is YouTube, but really I consider this to be the primary thing I'm doing. Um, but uh, it's it's like it, you're, it either connects with people or it doesn't. And I feel incredibly fortunate that you know, the stuff that I've been doing, you know, starting on Instagram with those art books, you know, connected with, with the audience it has. And uh, like I said, I'm always grateful to you guys for being here. I'm not one of those people who uh, takes stuff for granted. It's not my thing. Uh, it's not in my skill set. Yeah, let me see here. There we go. I just, uh, I, I, it, it's just so fun, guys. <laughs> you caught me. You caught me uh, realizing how fun it is. But this is... I, I love doing this, guys. I love doing this stuff. You know, old dirty fatty, it is great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Hail to you, brother. How are things? And Joe, I missed you. Joe Mello, I'm so sorry I missed you there. I must have looked down for a second. How are you doing? Hello, brother. It is great to see you, my friend. 
Um, wowzers, that is a never that that is the never ending comic. It is the never ending comic. You ain't kidding. You are not kidding. Uh, it is craziness. Yes. Uh, Frog G, Voodoo, Gods, and Magic. Amen. There it is, guys. Go check it out. Make it happen. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um this level of of detail, this level of painting. I want to start out when I'm introducing this world and this character. Um, I want it to be um to show you the scale of what he's coming out of because it's kind of um it's kind of I'm trying to think of what the big the really big Lovecraft book was, but it's in terms of, of the mythos, but I think you got to go with call of Thulu, man, you got to do it. And and that's kind of what this book is. This book really introduces you to the entire sort of, um, of origin mythos of what he comes out of. So it's got to establish the, the Conan elements, the Solomon Cain elements, the, um, you know, the, the high fantasy adventure, elements the lovecraft elements all of that stuff so that when you see the other creatures i introduce in book two oh no joe Mello! i am so sorry to hear that joe Mello. joe Mello, let me say this um i usually only reserve this for super chats but let me tell you this my friend um this is your feel better for sick with covid my friend so here you go <laughs> Charge! we want you to get better my friend so take care of yourself and just sit back and enjoy the stream. That's what we're here for. Oof. Man, that is, that is, that is tough, man. That's tough. I know a lot of people who are not feeling well. One of my doctors is not feeling well with that. So get better. Admiral Wackass channel member and all around legend who loves the cheerleaders. He's always good. And they love you, my friend. Uh, it's great to see you here in the chat, my friend. That's why I loved making uh, those little <laughs> custom emojis for them, man. It's like, because, you know, we've everything we do here is work, but it's the goal is fun, right? The goal is fun. If people aren't having fun, then, yeah, they were. Change a lot and then some, some. Know that we will always be down, down. You know what I'm saying? Um, You are very welcome, Joe. We want you to feel better. That's right. That is absolutely right. Marcus Kellegrew, indeed. We want you to get better, my friend. Yo, yo, Shant. Yo, yo, Admiral. Much love. Much love, as always. Yeah, it is great to see you guys here on this fine Sunday. Thank you guys for being here and hitting like and everything like that. It really does move things along. Um, I was telling my wife, it's like, um, you know, it's it's worse. We're spinning plates, and we got so many different things going. She's a very hardworking lady. She does graphic design. She's a teacher as well. Um, I am an illustrator, obviously, as you guys know. I do freelance illustration work, and then I also do my comic book, and then I also do... Um, you know, uh, gosh, the writing of it. And then I have to think about the YouTube channel and all that stuff. And you guys being here and having an audience that shows up for you and supports you. I forget how many channel members we have right now, but we've had a lot of channel members and I am so grateful to all of you guys who have become channel members. And, and it's just, it helps so much with the things that we're trying to do. Uh, and it's great seeing you guys in here. And, and like I said, I mean, I, I always hate when I hear, you know, one of our one of our crew is is down and, and feeling under the weather, but I know you guys are tough and you guys are gonna recover. So just take your time and feel better, and we'll entertain you while you are. You know, we'll entertain you while you are. That's our goal. That is our goal. Entertainment. There we go. Yeah, oh, the stairs are working. Yeah, this is some insane perspective on this, but I think I've got it figured. All right. Now let me focus on the things that Stephen Rockwood is most concerned about. That's how we do it. Gotta have fun. How's it going, Steven? <laughs> It's good to see you, man. Let me see here. Uh, working, okay, working on eight-page story myself for a gaming company this Sunday. Excellent, Marcus. Congratulations, my friend. Three Eleven was my jam in the late '90s. Michael, I feel like there's going to be a sing-along happening on your channel soon. I don't know how we'll sync that up with a time delay. Plate spinning. I hear the music now. You are darn right, Joe Mello. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bad case. <laughs> That's right, gotta do it. Entry of the gladiators. That's right, indeed, man. That's what we do here. 
Yes, indeed. One of the biggest tricks too to flesh tone people always struggle with is um, you got to make sure that you're putting cools in your highlights. That's a big, big part of it. And so even though this is not like, you know, the finish or whatever, I'm just roughing stuff in at this point. I still like to think in those terms because I think it makes it easier down the stretch if you know what you're doing, you know, with uh, the colors early on. There we go. Gotta get those hips in there. That's important, kids. Let's see, there we go. I'm gonna put in a little bit of blue because remember what I said, you wanna have that nice warm cool mix when you're working on the flesh tone or else it won't come alive, it won't look good. Uh, let's see how we're going, yeah. Uh, no, it's not that bad, I had COVID the same time last year. All right, good to hear, man. I'm glad it's not too tough, that's important. Um, yes, indeed. Yeah, look, people care, man. I mean, you know how it is here. It's like everybody's saying hello and everybody's checking on everybody. <laughs> that's right, Stephen Rockwood. Listen, I live to serve. I live to serve. That's what I do here. <laughs> 15, 7, 22. Throwing those measurements out, man. That's how we do it. Yeah, 15 plus 7 equals 22 indeed. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, oh, let me get some red out too, but for that matter. Which is a little different than white out in that sense. Um, hmm. There it is. All right. Man, I tell you what, I got some paint mixed into this red that's really weird. Like, I put it down on uh, to put some paint out and actually got some other color in there. So it's a little weird to get that color flowing out again. I have to work a little harder. But that's nothing we don't understand, right? <laughs> we all know how to work harder. Let's see here. There we go. Just drop some darker values in there so I can get that silhouette. Oops. There we go. There we go, get the silhouette in there. It's starting to come together. Get that closer in there for you. So you guys can see what we're up to. Let it focus. There we go. Uh, ink spots. It's good to see ink spots. Looking forward to your next uh, painting tutorial. Yeah, it's going to be uh, tomorrow, Monday. Um, next paint tutorial for me, living in Arizona. The hardest part about acrylics is the super fast drying time. I've got some good advice for you there, so don't you worry. Um, thanks, Shanth. I've been uh, working on this story for a while. My writer sent it to me, and... Um, it's oh cool Inca myths like uh, Nimor oh excellent yeah Inca myths are really really cool I can see the Frazetta influence you ain't kidding for I live for Frazetta man I love that stuff hey everyone indeed indeed yeah it is um yeah amen um, <laughs> without a doubt man no it's, I don't want to scare Michael off man I can't do that uh, Stephen Rockwood uh, shout over here pulling swords out of stones that's what I gotta do man and hail American Comics Company that's right man it's I love I love this kind of stuff, guys. I mean, it's we've got we've got the the chance to really bring some beauty out there into this world, and uh, that's the job. I mean, I'm a uh, I'm a servant of you know the aesthetics of of what we do here of work of art, and when I'm working, I'm always thinking about 
you know the fact that it's the job is to bring bring the beauty and bring in the uh, bring the booty as well but bring the beauty and uh and try to make these make these images as compelling as i possibly can and a way that you make these things compelling is you do it with the action you do it with the narrative and you do it with you know the the aesthetics and the beauty of what you have happening and so yeah if, if you get this book and it's not something that is a source of inspiration that you look to um to experience something aesthetic and beautiful then i haven't done my job and i think i don't even think that um that a lot of people working in comics uh, in the mainstream have thought about that for a very long time making something beautiful they want to make something witty or they want to make something that is um you know uh you know it's like a cynical take on something that that was once beautiful and i just that's not what i'm into that is not no way for me anyway to spend my life is making something that is not um that just doesn't have any soul to it and doesn't have any sense of beauty and it's all about look how i'm getting away with making something that's ugly and then telling you you should buy it it's ridiculous it's like making food that tastes bad and applauding yourself that someone has to eat it it's ridiculous i don't understand that and uh, it's never going to be a part of what i do ever that's just not what i'm into um yay what's up ntm comics it's good to see you noah how are you doing my friend yeah what's up american comics company um always great to see y'all indeed man it's great to have you guys here man it's great to have you guys here I love I love spending a Sunday with you wild maniacs. And look at people dropping links so fast. You guys have reflexes, man. Yeah, they forgot the rule of cool, amen. And the rule of fun, too, right? I mean, get out of town. I mean, we gotta be having fun, don't you think? It's 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 nuts. It's nuts, I say. I mean, look, life is gonna have hard work in it. Life's gonna have like I, I was watching again, I was watching this YouTube channel, um, Grim Life Collective, and it was great because um he, you know, they was the guy made some comment and he was, you know, well he's been in his forties and he was said, um uh he goes, uh I mean if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? And then he paused for a minute like everybody does over a certain age and goes, Well I mean, you can't have fun all the time and it's like, no kidding, right? Uh, what's up, Cranberry Langers? It's great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? My gosh, chat's going crazy right now, as always. But we love it. It's a good kind of crazy. Everybody's saying hello to Noah and Cranberry Langers. Look at this. It was good to finally be on a stream with you the other day on EBS's show. Noah, same to you, my friend. I was just talking about you earlier on the stream. You should go back and check it out, man. My son is your age, and um, I cannot tell you how happy I am to see your enthusiasm, your success, and your passion for comics game, man. Um, it makes me smile. My, actually, both of my kids are that age. I have twins, and um, it's it's just great to see, man. Keep up the great work. I love how much work you put into comics already. I was the same way. Just keep being a machine. That's the way to do it, you know. Just conduct yourself with character like you're doing, and keep making the work, and you're gonna be great. You are ahead of the curve, my friend. Ahead of the curve. Um, yeah, by saying hello, hello, hello. I love seeing it. Cranberry Langer's YouTube channel. Check it out. All of these links, man. That John, they always find the hotter stuff. That's right. Yeah, that's right, man. That's right. Oh my goodness, you guys are crazy. Uh, but yeah, man, it's it's comics to me is are it's just something that you just gotta have. You know this this you have in your soul, man. It's like I'm so passionate about it, and I love going back. And when I buy the comics from you know different times, the thing that I always come back around to was um. They, they take me to memories of when I learned something about drawing or when I saw something in storytelling and it made me actually so feel what was going on with the action. And I went, well, how is it? How is this these pictures and words able to do this? And it's just I like different comics for different reasons. I love um, Simon Bisley's um, Slain. You know, artwork is incredible. I remember seeing that in college. Uh, I'm not as big. I mean, I love Simon Bisley, so this is not. It's not an insult to Bisley to say I'm not as big of a Bisley fan as Phil Diaz is, because Phil Diaz is an unbelievably big Bisley fan. But I'm a pretty big fan of his stuff. Uh, Frazetta is is pretty much where I live, but I remember seeing that stuff in college and just going, "This is crazy! Like, how do people do stuff like this?" Uh, and just I love comics for that reason, so I always try to make sure that I have those books in my library over there. And it's great to finally be excited about comics again, guys. I cannot tell you. Oh, my goodness. Look at all you people. Oh, my gosh. Uh, is it um, uh, Mayako Movies? Is that right? Am I pronouncing that right? Welcome. My man, Lloyd Burton, is in the house. I tip my cap to Lloyd Burton. My man, it is great to see you. I hope you are doing well. Hello to you and hello to the family, of course. 
Mr. Monkey Boy 1969 saying hello to everybody. Look at you wonderful people here. You guys make things great. Happy Sunday all, says Cranberry Langers. Indeed, and my brother Phil, Lost Pages 3 sign up, guys. Make sure you're signed up for it. Yeah, Phil Phil Diaz is a busy simp. Yeah, he is, totally. And he oh man, when I see the busy artwork he gets, I think my favorite um some of my favorite things I've seen, um, covers coming out by people who are uh, who do work for CG but aren't really uh, CG, and let me know if I'm leaving anybody out, are um, Simon Bisley stuff for Lepresti uh, and uh, for Phil, and then, um, uh, gosh, uh, Jay Lee stuff, man. Jay Lee's Cyberfrog stuff is incredible. I don't know if you guys are a big fan of Jay Lee's Cyberfrog covers, but I really, um, if you look at my trading card, I was really inspired by uh, the way that Jay Lee um uh just does action in that stuff i think that was one of my favorite um bits of non-ethan cyberfrog work at that point because i don't think dale had done his um any of his stuff yet but yeah si uh jay lee is is an incredible he's an incredible artist man jay lee is great let's see if i can get this to work just a terrific dude and someone people should uh not mess with they should leave him the hell alone as uh, I think we made clear, uh, <laughs> as Jim Lee made clear too, for that matter. Yeah, he's he's one of the nice guys of comics, and he's just somebody I, I don't understand why anybody would have an issue with him. Um, that's a it's a very weird it's a very weird thing, but his I think his Cyber Frog artwork. I know Ethan uh, said he paid a hell of a lot for it, and I think it's worth every penny. You know, I think it's worth every penny. I I mean, I really enjoyed doing my Cyber Frog you know card for ethan it was he's he's gives creatives and creators a lot of leeway which is something i i really do appreciate yeah get get well soon joe mello joe mello are you off all right everyone take it easy going to get some rest all right joe mello my brother take care feel better we need you brother we need you and i'm glad to hear it's not so bad and you're on the mend my friend yeah i mean we got it's, look uh, is there any like people uh, i always talk about this stuff i know you guys know this but um I love the fact that when people aren't feeling well or people going through a tough time, just the 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 fellowship and the the friendship of and the, just the kindness of telling people, hey, feel better. I hope you're doing well, man. How you doing? I, I love that stuff, man. Hello, Moss Blackburn. Great to see you in the chat. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. And yes, indeed, feel better, Joe. Absolutely right, man. Yeah, good people, man. Good people in comics. Cake. I mean, look if. I was trying to explain this to one of my kids the other day. Actually, he was explaining this to my daughter the other day. And I think it's it's something that um, that is... So I know Anna actually talked about this. I forget who it was in reference to. It might have been in reference to Rakeda, but someone will have to ask Anna, um, that Star Wars girl, um, about it. But, it, you know, she quoted the Wolf of Wall Street, pay attention to, um, to people who... those who don't clap when you succeed. And... Um, the thing that's great about CG is you got a lot of people who are actually happy for one another when they succeed and are are supportive. And I think that that's a big thing. Um, if you have people in any group where that they aren't that way, that's to be that's not like a shocking thing, but it really is a pretty shocking thing how many people are just genuinely happy for each other and supportive of each other um, inside of space. But I will tell you. Um, as a long time, you know, comic book fan and, and science fiction and fantasy fan, this was actually always the case here. We've been gaslit for almost, you know, a decade now that we're something that we're not. I've never had a bad experience with comic book people at any time showing my artwork, any of that stuff. Yeah, disavow, trauma dumping. Indeed. Um, let's see here. Oh, what, um... The only thing that ever annoyed me about Jay Lee was the page count on Hellshock number one. Oh, yeah, man. I remember that. Boy, you go back about the same time I do, man. It's the Fellowship of the Sea. Yes, it is, man. Yes, it is. Absolutely, guys. Yeah, man. I love seeing it, man. I love seeing this stuff, guys. Yeah. Hail to you, brother. Hail to you. Um, but it's, it is. It's it's kind of... It's, it's an interesting thing. Like, I would go to conventions... Todd McFarlane, when I met him at a convention, he was nice to me. Hell, I had an experience with John Byrne, and everybody was like, gosh, if you go and see John Byrne, he's he's notoriously terrible, he's hard on people, blah, blah, I showed him my portfolio and, uh, in, in the in Atlanta uh, Dragon Con, and he was, you know, he had his little uh, podium there, because he always liked to see people eye to eye, 
and he was just so nice to me as a young artist. He was like, your stuff is great. You know, you're you're working hard. You're you're drawn from life. You're doing all these things, and don't let anybody you know dissuade you. And I was like, holy cow! I had nothing but good experiences. Yeah, you have people who are who are just like, oh, you know, they're too cool to be at the convention. There's like, I'm like, I don't want to deal with fans at a convention. And you're like, all right, that's that's cool, but they're not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. Agent Zero Studios, it's great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Just hanging out while doing some plumbing. Hey, listen, God bless you for your work. Uh, I hope you are uh, having an easier time finding people um, to apprentice under you and do that kind of work in your neck of the woods um, if you're a professional plumber than we are out here. My, my plumber, who's a terrific guy, uh, John, was telling me what a nightmare it is to find people, you know. Um, let's see here. Um uh, Let's see, oh, what? Miss Conversations Co. brought all that stuff to a standstill for a while. Yes, it did. Darn Shanth got my um, fat fingered comment. <laughs> womp, womp. Wait, what? Um, the Cobbler and the King. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, God, my reading is terrible today. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Burn is a good guy. I've been a member of his message board since, I think, 2004. He's just kind of tired of the whole business in general, though. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, it, it burns a lot of people out. And yes, indeed, Admiral saying hello, hello. Yeah, I mean, it is, um, it, how do I word it? Uh, it's, I, I can't speak to it, like, because, I mean, my experience is with, with educa the education industry and not the comic book industry in that sense. And everything I freelanced in, it has its ups and downs, but I never got into, um, I never got into uh, mainstream comics or comics in general to the point where I got, um, I had to deal with, and it was never, frankly, as successful of an industry during my time, uh, where uh, if you were on the outside of it, you could get pulled into the bureaucracy. I know once you get to a certain level, you deal with it, but but Byrne, I'm sure, has seen all of the aspects of the bureaucracy and all of the aspects of, of you know the BS, and I'm sure it wears you out. I think the thing that allows people to be able to handle it long term, uh, and this goes with everything, teaching, art, whatever it is, um, is your love of the thing that you're doing. You know, you got to love, you know, the, the work, the actual, the painting and artwork. And I think that's where you see people who are the happiest, you know. I mean, I've been doing I've been doing artwork and just putting in 14-hour days forever, man. Uh, and so it's it, to me, it makes sense. Um, I actually work in e-commerce selling mechanical keyboards as my day job. Very nice. So you're just, oh, you got plumbing skills too, man. Holy cow, that's awesome. Electrical journeyman checking in. Indeed, indeed. Um, so getting into the industry is the problem, especially if you are older and can't go down to making, yes, apprentice salary. You're absolutely right. No, but that's that's very true. Um, I, I was a member of his message board, says Marcus. Yeah, there you go. Um, burns a lot of people out. Yes, it does. Yeah. Nah, just some DIY uh, sync and uh, install work. Love your workshop. Thank you, Agent Zero Studios. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, guys, the, the kind comments are never lost on me, man. Yeah, love the one you're with. Indeed. Um, personally, around here, I was thinking electrician. Yeah, amen. Yeah, we need electricians too. Don't get me wrong, guys. Shocker. Um, hand skills are really, really valuable. Really, really valuable. Um, that's why I like doing traditional artwork because um, at some point, you got to remember, um, if you can do traditional artwork, you can... Uh, or you have a friend who does traditional painting, they can always bail you out on an anniversary with a painting of your wife or your uh, or your kid for your wife. You're always going to be golden. So uh, never forget that, kids. It's important. That's where the traditional skills really come come in. <laughs> Bailing out your friends. Oh my god. And you can charge a lot when it's a last minute present. So that's the cool part of it. <laughs> Here we go. I'm getting that together. There we are. I know some of you guys saw the, um, who follow me on Twitter, saw the uh, Denzel Washington uh, Book of Eli piece, which I know a lot of people responded really positively to. That's what I love. I was telling um, my kids about this the other day when I was talking about art. I go, um, accuracy is never a bad skill to cultivate. Um, painting from observation and making artwork from observation and being able to recreate what you, you see in front of you is something that I've seen have such an incredibly positive effect on people. Yes, indeed. Shout out, indeed. Yeah, Agent Zero Studios, Elect Chicken. Yeah, there you go. That's right, guys. 
Uh, let's see here. I've been a plumber for 24 years. Wow. Yeah. Finding anyone good is very hard these days. Yeah. Finding people to train. Guys, um, I don't know um, if you guys are familiar with this, but this is the biggest thing about it, you know, is that um, if you um, uh, if you want to see a really interesting interview by um, a woman who uh, is a genius, she's a PhD, she has autism and grew up, um, I think she's in her 70s now, late 70s, named Temple Grandin, one of my absolute heroes. Uh, and she um, has had a lot of, done a lot of work in the cattle industry and all of that, but she, um, was talking about skill loss. It is a real problem that we're dealing with right now. Uh, and I would encourage anybody, She Jordan Peterson interviewed her. They had a nice lengthy interview. Actually, I was gonna tell Ethan about that because I thought he might find it fascinating. He probably knows who Temple Grandin is though. Um, but, uh, but talking about visual thinking and visual learning and all that kind of stuff, but she talks a lot about skill loss and how much you know, we need people who are you know, aviation engineers and we need people with, you know, different skill sets you know to do the actual hands-on stuff and I feel like um, and she was talking about how a lot of people with the really good hand skills are aging out you're seeing a lot more gray hair amongst skilled people and I think that that's something that um, that is a part of what you're seeing I mean everybody I know who does a skilled profession talks about that like people who know how to work know how to show up and can actually do the job hand skills are big and so yeah you need electricians you need plumbers right now like crazy you will never be out of work the biggest problem with being a plumber and electrician is if you have family because you're like an on-call doctor though every plumber tells me that uh, you're going to get a call constantly <laughs> from someone in your family or a friend of someone in your family who needs your help but you know I don't know I can't speak to that uh, yes plumbers have safe more lives than doctors you might be right about that although we do need those folks too you know uh, indeed, man, indeed. And uh, let's see here. Oh my gosh, just jumping in. Channel member Timmy Mello saying hail chat. We say hail to you, Timmy Mello, the man. It's great to see you. Um, always great to see Timmy Mello. Uh, the chat, um, GPT, a lot of the tech jobs might be going out of business and some of the work that's going on, uh, going to be left. It's going to be traditional hard labor physical work. Yeah, um, welding is another one of those examples. Temple always talks about that. It's absolutely true. Um, I love YouTube helping with um, with skill loss somewhat mitigated. Yes, it, it's funny you say that. That's absolutely true. Um, you're seeing, uh, let's see here, hold on a second. John, uh, nobody older that has my skills applies. They are always green and nobody young wants to do the job. There you go. Um, nearly 30 years, Crenshaw, absolutely. Let me tip my cap to you. Nearly 30 years in drywall and I can't find anybody willing to be on the move all day. Young dudes can't keep up with me, and I don't move fast. My friend, actually, my friend Michael, if you have not watched his YouTube channel, guys, I love his movie reviews. Michael over at the Choice Voice, he's just, he takes a, he takes a hatchet to modern entertainment sometimes, but he's been doing it for a very long time. Michael over at the Choice Voice, my good friend Michael King, hail to Michael King. Um, he's been on the show with, um, when we were doing uh, Horror at the Waffle Lodge, which I'm sure we'll be doing soon. Uh, again, once we get a chance, but um, but Michael came on one time when we were talking about Hammer Horror Films. He introduced me to Hammer Horror Films. Terrific dude, the choice voice. Check out his channel, um, Michael King. Um, but he um, he manages a lot of properties, and that guy works like a machine. And he also makes Star Trek fan films. He makes YouTube content, and I'm talking really great stuff. Starship Valiant. He's the guy who does uh, Starship Valiant uh, fan films. He's just a terrific dude. Really love that guy. Everybody saying hello, Drawn Sword Graphics. It's great to see you, man. How are you doing? Brushing 14 hours a day. Awesome. Yeah, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. HBO did a pretty good job. Yes, the Temple Grandin movie on HBO was great, Blackjack. And I think anybody who has a family member or knows anybody um, who has autism and is looking for or has someone close to them with autism and is looking for a good resource, uh, Temple Grandin is fantastic as a resource because she talks about it from the inside and she I've actually seen her lecture in person and she's incredible with what she says I mean people come up there and try to talk in circles and give her too much BS um, she's just like no give me data 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 and that's what she says she shuts down in a loving sense she su shuts down Jordan Peterson a few times when he tries to tell her what it's like she's like no that's not what it's like and she's you know she's not doing it because she's disrespectful or whatever obviously she's on his show and she's talking about her book but man she is 
she knows what she's talking about. She wants to tell people about, you know, her work in uh, livestock and her work in the, um, uh, you know, the cattle and uh, meat uh, industry. She's t she talks about that. She's designed a lot of the stuff that the big companies use. She talks about how important it is to have um, people get out of the damn uh, office who are the bureaucrats at these places and get them in the field to see what's happening. And uh, it is a great interview. Jordan Peterson, God bless him, and uh, and uh, Temple Grandin. It's one of her, his most uh, recent interviews. And it is just fantastic. I'd encourage anybody to check it out. You know, it's just great stuff. She's a, she's a real pioneer in explaining, um, uh, you know, get, helping to give people a better understanding. And she never started out wanting to be an advocate. She wanted to just, you know, she loved animals and she has worked around them and she wanted to work on a farm and do all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, she became an advocate because, you know, she had, she had a lot of knowledge and people wanted to hear it. And that's the best part about it. I mean, you go out and you put yourself out there on YouTube or anywhere and you share the things that you share and you don't really know if there's going to be an audience for it ever. Um, and, and the audience kind of just tells you, you know, trust the process is what I always say. You know, you'll find where you're supposed to be. You'll find where you're supposed to be. And also remember to put warms in your shadows when you're painting flesh tone and cools in your highlights. How's that for a little bit of side advice there? <laughs> Side advice of what we're doing here, guys. There we go. We're starting to get this together here. Um, hey, what's up, Aetherline? How are you doing, my friend? Uh, let's see here. Everybody saying hello, hello. Tesla Academy. Yo, wow, I didn't know what that is. Let, let me know more. <laughs> uh, whoa, that link seems dead. Which one? Oh, the, um, is it for Michael's channel? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if it's, uh, yeah, his might be, I don't know what his is. It's, the, it's called the Choice Voice, so let me know if you can track it down. Um, I have two younger nephews that I've tried to get to work with me, double the money they make now, and I've uh, now and a chance to take over the business. My goodness, nope, they don't want to work hard. Yep, guys, uh, this is the reason why I do the stuff I do. Um, is that there's nobody who is going to work for what I am working for who will work as hard as I do. That's why Nosferu is going to look better than it costs. Because, you know, there are, there's no, uh, there's no royalty checks, someone handing the print, handling the printing, there's no manufacturing being done. What you guys see in terms of what I raise is not what I get. You know what I mean? It is not what I get. That is what I have to work with for everything. And so it's, it's, it's very different. And we have to, you have to be willing when you get in the comics gate to work your tail off. Uh, and that's what it is. And channel member Cranberry Langers, it is great to see you, my friend. I don't know if I give you a shout out um, for that. Whoa, that's weird. What is that? Hold on a second here. I don't know what that is. I, I'm seeing what you're seeing. Hang on a second here. Uh, okay. Let me see here. I don't think his channel got hacked or nuked, but you never know. Hang on a second. Did he change it to something? Sorry, guys. I have to. I have to figure this out because this is kind of nuts to me. Alrighty. Yeah. What in the hell is going on here? All right. Show 180 more. That is really messed up. Hold on a second here. Blathers. I'm gonna have to figure out what went on with that at some point, man. That is messed up. Huh. I'm sure it must be something I'm missing, but holy cow, that is bizarre. All right, guys, so let me see here. My older son is my older son is 26. He's a mechanical engineer um, uh, to, uh, who is disciplined enough to work from home. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, thanks, no problem. I'm trying to make um, a tamale loaf. Oh, my God, that sounds good. Um, work as ability to comprehend. Amen, amen. Shakes head, I know. Uh, like the red-orange edge around the shadows. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. Um, well, Ink, if you want an adopted nephew and can pay more than 20 an hour, there you go. Hmm, Choice Voice seems to have been hacked. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll have to see where that goes. Um, yay, my makers will be arriving soon. There you go. Um, let's see here. Spot, same with my stepson. My daughter, however, is a beast when it comes to hard work. Yeah, I mean, hard work, you know, you hear me say that all the time. It's in the Shanth and Jetty Art logo. Hard work and dedication is where it's at, guys. That's everything that we do here. And, and I think that's the thing that um, 
should intimidate people about you know trying to come into the space at least doing a project is that it's always going to be more work than you can imagine so part of it has got to be a leap of faith but the biggest thing that you're going to fall back on is your discipline you know the, the thing that's going to help you to get a book done that you conceive of and create from start to finish is going to be 100 percent about your discipline and so um I focus 100%, almost like, you know, again, I love boxing, you know that. Um, I focus 100% on what I'm working on right now, and I never think about issue two until I get to a certain point. And I've just started to think a little bit about issue two because it's fight the, you know, person that you have to fight in front of you. Don't think about your next fight and uh, think about all of the things you have to do. And so I get to think a little bit of, you know, creatively about, you know, the next issue at this point but it's still it's still not like I'm going to once I have the freedom to do so because I've got to be able to uh, you know to focus 100% on this because every now and again I'll come up with an idea for a panel or a bit of text that I wouldn't be able to come up with if I was if my mind was elsewhere it's 100% focused on making this the best book that you guys can have it should be a nice square bound hardcover thick paper stock page after page of beauty that is the goal um, yeah. Oh, I meant markers. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, for us, <laughs> forgot an R. Well, I could have just as easily read it wrong. So I'm glad you told me that. Yeah. Try the, um, uh, technical method, slow, um, low and slow. Uh, <laughs> guys, guys are putting me through my paces here. Um, there are a couple of videos, um, wishing the choice voice well with the hacked within the last 24 hours. Oh my gosh. That's awful. Oh, I'm gonna have to text him. Oy vey. Uh, same with my stepson. Dark. Gosh darn it. Ah, I hate when people are... Uh, yeah, people go after people like that, man. That annoys me. Oh, let me see. Uh, I want to uh, give a plug for my friend Agent Zero's upcoming comic project. Um, Chrome Dog, which Luke Stone is illustrating comic launches a day before my birthday, February 3rd. Well, hold on a second here. Oh, excellent. Good. You've got the link there. I was just making sure. There it is. Thank you, Timmy Mello. I was like, you're a channel member, but I thought I modded you at the very least, man. Yeah, discipline for the win. Amen. Yeah. So bead. Yeah, there you go. Um, I want to know what is... I want to know what's happening with my friend Michael, man. That's really awful. I hope he sorts it out. I was just looking at his channel yesterday. In a world obsessed, uh, obsessed about control, why is self-control never the consideration? Amen. Agreed, John. Um... Oh, it's like boiling, sort of. There you go. American Comics Company, I am uh, doing the slow method, I think, said Cranberry Langers. Look at this. You guys are giving tamale advice on my stream. I think I could die happy now. This is the best This is the best kind of conversation. I don't know if you guys know, but I was born in Houston. I had family in El Paso, Texas. My wife is from Dallas. We love ourselves some tamales. That is the good stuff. That is... You know, I think actually, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Conan the Barbarian, but when they asked him what is best in life, I think he said tamales. I'm pretty sure that was his answer. You know, I don't think I'm wrong on that. Conan, what is best in life? Tamales. That was it. That was the whole conversation. That was all he had to say, and, I, and I'm not going to argue with him. He's a giant man. It's terrifying. Um, and uh, nobody does. I feel bad ever attempting an Arnold uh, imitation now that I've heard Jericho's because it's freaking sublime. Just amazing stuff, man. 40 people in the chat. Make sure you guys hit that like if you haven't yet. My God. Going haywire. There we go. Now we've got this panel. This panel is a very... It's it's one of those panels to where, if you see the top panel, you know what I mean. It's like the action is unfolding in this scene, right? And they go to war. And it's just going to be like every panel I want to be just, you know, driving the intensity of the visuals there, you know? And it's like they're both hitting each other at the same time, and they're both, you know, <laughs> it's going to be great, man. My control over yours gives my life value is absolutely right how they do it, man. You ain't kidding. That, that cracked me up. But Donkashane, American Comics Company, sounds delicious. There you have it, man. Hail 40% Zed. Hail to you, Arthur Line. That's how we do it. Siege Perilous, it is great to see you. How are you doing? I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Hard work, dedication, and hard work. Rocky Chicken Run. There you go. Um... That's what he said. As a Canadian trapped in a gummy winter hellscape, I have never had a tamale. We got to get some tamales to 40% Zed, man. We got to get you some tamales. Um, yes, absolutely. 
classic high flavor and no added healthier there you go there you go that's the key yep toward new levels so let's see what else we need to do here all right so i've got this here i've got this here this character here good i think i've got that organized hail shanth and well thanks yeah absolutely thank you for being here my friend we appreciate you we appreciate you here as always as always we do um, so let me show you guys some of the stuff, um, some of the other stuff I've got going on. What have I got going on? So I've already been given glimpses of this, but um, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about, um, I, I'm going to do a video uh, tonight or tomorrow morning, probably tonight knowing me, um, that's going to be about um, painting figures and painting anatomy, but I'm going to do it with uh, creatures, not this creature right here. But this right here, these creatures and these things are a look at what you have in store for Nosferu 2. When I get to it, um, this has got to get done first. But it's going to be an incredibly cool world. Um, and for those of you guys, you can DM me on Twitter or whatever. But I'm also selling these um, these paintings right now that I did that were experiments of Razor Fist characters. Um, they're, uh, they're 500 apiece. Just let me know. You can reach out to me or you can leave a comment. They're 11 by 14 on Canvas panel. Um, and pretty solid. So anybody interested in those, let me know. Cause I know some of you guys asked me when I sell originals. Um, but yeah, let's see what else we've got going on here. Oh my gosh. I think I have everything there. Oh yes. And uh, I was wondering if Rob Arnold was going to swing in. Cause I had those black and white pieces that I showed the other day and he asked me about them. And I thought, my gosh, uh, Taco Bell makes a spicy tamale. Michael knows the real Mexican food is Taco Bell. That's right, man. Look at all the love here in the chat. Oh my gosh. The chat's flying. Um, take a page out of the Japanese skill development method. Um, uh, Kaysen, uh, continuous improvement furthered uh, the field of metallurgy for a better sword. Amen. That's true. Iron sharpens iron as well. Fun indeed. No problem, Zero. Good luck on the launch. Uh, a year of preparation finally comes together, and CG is going to love it. They are going to love it. Amen. I love seeing stuff like that from you guys. But for those of you guys um, who I think so, a lot of you guys probably have seen it on stream, but I got this for Rob because he was asking me to show it, so I'll show it to you guys in case any of you missed it. But Rob had asked me to show um, this black and white artwork I did a while back when I was exploring what I might do for CG. So in case Rob catches this later, Rob, this is for you because I've got a higher res uh, camera on this now. So this is what some of my black and white sketch work looks like, man. So this is what I was doing when I was working out a comic book story idea um, that was very um, action-oriented. had some crazy fantasy stuff in it um, and some battles. So this was, and then also some other, you know, aspects to the story as well. So this is the kind of stuff that when people ask, you know, do I ever do any black and white stuff? This is what my black and white stuff looks like. And then let's see here, this one right here. Here's another page I was doing in this sketchbook. So a lot of this stuff is, um, is just done in a watercolor sketchbook, you know, with me just kind of working with tones and grayscale. Um, and kind of playing around with the, the visual language of black and white. I mean, I think you can see the similarities to what I'm doing, frankly, in my color work when you look at my black and white work. And then here's a, a gigantic creature I did as well. Um, that was from that story. So it's it, this is all stuff that I've messed around with, you know. And I don't know what I'll ever do with this, if I'll ever do anything with it. But who knows, maybe if I ever do, um, you know, another collection of my stuff, I'll just include, you know, this in an art book, you know, for people who are interested in it. Um, my next art book's going to be nuts because I've got tons of artwork uh, piled up, uh, ready to launch for that. So I think the next project I launch is going to be with stuff I already have done, and that's going to be quicker because I'm finally building enough equity in the stuff that I have. But this is a book that was actually about um, uh, the Filipino um, uh, Mononongal lore. So that's what this story was really tied to. And you can kind of see um, that more on... I have two pages that basically show this um, this kid's um, mom becoming one, uh, and it was uh, it was a really you know crazy sort of story, and I was roughing it out in black and white because it was a pretty intense, almost like a horror comic story. But here is the uh, yeah here is that the transformation, you know of uh, of her and the character, and uh, yeah I mean it's like as we say in New England you know I can do that. I'm smart. I'm smart. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's that's what this world is about. And actually, the uh, the characters, the the look of the character as an adult, the little kid grown up, was inspired by one of my favorite fighters because I paint characters that are inspired by my fighters. 
and it's uh, Nonito Donaire. So I love Nonito Donaire, uh, a great champion and a great guy. And so yeah, this is this is the story, um, and I love. I love doing stuff. You can really see the Todd McFarlane and Dave Stevens. and I mean, that stuff's in all of my work. You can see, I mean, let's be clear. You can see the creature design you're getting in Nosferu in this. But, yeah, here's the main character getting the uh, burn marks that he gets on his face um, from this angel when he goes down to uh, fight. And so, yeah, this is him. And he's got, his, he's got his tattoos. And he gets this feather that's a blade. Which, again, guys, there are so many similar themes in my stuff what's up mighty geek studios great to see you my friend how are you doing brother gosh it's, i looked down for one second winged vampires look 50 percent of my groomsmen were filipino so those are my brothers i'm ride or die with those guys the groomsmen some of you guys may know the groomsmen he's been in this chat a bunch of times but um what is that Shanth all pencils the rob arnold sketchbook you were showing yes this isn't pencils this is ink um so this is just watered down ink and uh brush work with ink uh, a little bit of pen in here i think but, um, yeah, guys, I do I do a ton of stuff. I mean, the first thing I ever did for an idea for um, for uh, a Comicsgate book was um, was a kaiju book, believe it or not. I'm not even kidding. And uh, I just didn't have a, a good story for it. And I just needed to do um, stuff that was over the top. You know, I really wanted to push, you know, my work as far as I could go. And, um, and so I wanted to do a painted comic book. That was the big thing. But... I might do, you know, if I do a collection of, of paintings and art, if you guys think this is, I mean, if this is something people are going to back, because we can, it's not enough to like it. <laughs> it's got to be like, people got to like be like, I'm ready to back this, take my money, please. I will put these pages, I will do an art book that has some of these projects in there, and has, I will include this story in the art book if you guys are liking this stuff. It can't just be Rob Arnold buying it, though, guys. I love Rob. I would be this close to doing it just for Rob. But, um, but yeah. Like, this is, this is the stuff that when I go nuts with pen and ink, this is what I do. You know? Just crazy brush work. It's because, yeah. You know, learn how to draw, learn how to paint, learn how to do all that stuff. I mean, I go from, and bear in mind, guys, this is why I tell people a diverse skill set's important, you know? I go from that stuff to this stuff right here. i turn off this damn light. Hang on a second here. i am move this light over. I go from that stuff to this stuff right here um you guys of course know this stuff right there and then we've got um gosh you can see some of the ink stuff happening in the double page spread that i'm working on right now for nosfero my detailed sort of brush stuff that i do um and a lot of people see it in this page which i know a lot of people are into um and then there's, and I see I see it everywhere actually, guys. But it's in this piece right here. Like it's about doing absolutely everything you can do. It's about being the greatest artist you can be every single day and leaving it all in the ring. That is what it's about, guys. I live for this stuff. I've had so many art heroes that have inspired me. I feel like the luckiest guy in the world when I get up in the morning. I feel like I love Comicscape more every single day that I work. I'm so grateful for all of you guys who are channel members. Uh, and those of you guys who are channel members who, before you were channel members, were sending super chats and all this stuff. We, we did not know the support we were going to get from Comicscape. And we just hoped and we prayed. <laughs> and I am so grateful uh, that you guys are here and that you guys are so supportive uh, and uh, you have my back, so I'm always going to deliver great stuff to you. And um, I bring everything I can bring as an artist every single day I sit at my desk to work, guys. Every single day I want to bring the best stuff I can bring to you guys because I care about this stuff we're doing so much. Indeed. Thank you so much, Bordeaux. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys are the best, man. You guys are the best. Yeah, it's the power of the Rob Hawk. That's right, man. I love Rob Hawk, man. Preach. Stephen Rockwood. Drawn Sword Graphics, thank you so much. Um, I love how you hop around with work on a page. And Spike, thank you so much, man. It's, it's all from the soul, man. It's from the soul. Uh, love you guys. Joseph Dredd, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cranberry Langers. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> God. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, Hill Chat, thank you, Admiral Wackass. I'm, I'm a Looney Tune. What can I say, man? Yeah, absolutely. 
it's uh, this stuff is it's great man it's great thank you mighty geek studios you guys are you guys are fantastic i really appreciate you guys um it is it's great oh my gosh soul curie art became a member oh my gosh thank you so much my friend i appreciate that oh my gosh i gotta play some cheerleaders for you what the heck thank you so much i'm gonna have to add your name to the credits uh next time <laughs> Ah, oh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that so much. Guys, it is an honor and it is a privilege to do this stuff for you. And I want to make you guys proud of this book. I want you to be proud to own it. I want you guys to be uh, enjoy it. And I want to make you guys proud in the sense that you guys see this work and you say, this is what we do at Comicsgate. This is how hard we work. We are just crushing it every day. We are driven. We are passionate. We support each other and we lift each other up. Because we cannot do this without money. We will drown if we do not get support from you guys. And you guys give us that support. God bless you. We appreciate you so much. Uh, I can't overstate it. Yes, and check out these links, guys. When people post links, please, please, please do check them out. Um, give people subscribers. It's important. Can we get a plunger in the members' bathroom? <laughs> There's clocks. Yeah, I'll see what I can do, Steve Robert. You're the first member, so I consider you to be, you know ruling the uh, the members hall where everybody hangs out so uh yes indeed you are in charge my friend uh it is great to see you all you guys you are amazing man i appreciate it much love guys um i think that's a great place for us to wrap out wrap up here i hopefully you guys have seen some great artwork on this stream you're inspired and ready to go about your day and you know how much i appreciate you guys uh because i this is a dream come true for me to be doing what we're doing here in comics gate and uh you guys are the best i want you all to have a wonderful sunday if you're under the weather, I hope you'll feel better. If anybody in your family is under the weather, I hope they will feel better. Um, and and just know that that you are funding the best artwork I can do, the best artwork any of us can do. And we're going to keep working hard for you because it is a pleasure to be bringing beauty and creativity um, into this world for you guys. So I hope you guys will take care, and uh, I hope you guys will have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Oh, my gosh, look at this. Cranberry Langers sending a super chat. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. New Year, Little Smokies. That's right. Let me get some cheerleaders for you. Here you go. Charge. Bless you, Cranberry Langers. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Be safe, everyone, and best is yet to come. Indeed, guys. We're going to make it happen. No doubt. Uh, 40% Zed, thanks for the hangout. Thank you for hanging out, 40% Zed. I appreciate it. Not and clap, indeed. Um, but what about the grape juice question? We'll get there. Don't worry, we've got time, brother. And thank you, Stephen Rockwood. Yes, indeed, guys. Take care and thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Cheers, everyone. Yes, indeed. Take care. Thank you for the entertaining hangout, Sean. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate it. Moss Blackburn. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Thank you. You too. Dan Lawless, my brother. Gross point, Dan. It is great to see you. Happy New Year, Sean. Happy New Year to you, Dan. It's great to see you. Give me a call after this, man. we got to catch up at some point, brother. Um, Hail, Sean. Thanks for the stream. You're very welcome, Crenshaw. Uh, thank you for the stream. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Creative Faye. I appreciate it. Stephen Rockwood drawing. Everybody's <laughs> cracking up. Uh, thank you, Chow. Yes, indeed. Hail, Dan Lawless, my brother, Gross Point Dank, the main man, the king himself. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. It's great seeing you guys. And now I'm going to play the credits. And new channel members, you will be added to the credits for the next one. And thank you guys for being channel members. Take care. Hail to all of you. Peace. And as always, guys, as always, stay gold. Take care. Dedication.